Hello and welcome back to Dosh Tech. Today we are going to be upgrading the CPU in a laptop. This is only a rough guide as obviously every laptop is different. So today what we're going to be doing is fitting this Core 2 Duo here that I managed to get on an internet auction site, or as most people know, eBay, for about 8 quid, which is uh, possibly about $10, something like that. Um, which is a good deal for when upgrading an ancient laptop such as this one if you want to squeeze just a tiny bit more life out of it or use it as a server or something like that which is what I plan to do with this or, or I'm already doing this as I should say but uh, the performance isn't quite there as it will actually pin the CPU 100% most of the time so an upgrade for a cheap price is certainly in order here so I managed to get this Core 2 Duo and that's what we're going to be putting in this Ergo Microlite 531 laptop, also known as an MSI PR201. So, what you're going to need for this is obviously your new processor, some heatsink paste, thermal compound, thermal grease, whichever you wish to call it, small Phillips head screwdriver just to undo the screws on the back, and a small flat head to undo the uh, CPU retention mechanism on what is in this case a socket P uh, on this laptop. So generally what you're going to want to do before you start putting any sort of hardware on, into the system is a BIOS update to make sure that the new CPU you're going to put in is actually going to work. Because obviously you wouldn't want to have to put the old one back in just to get the uh, BIOS to be updated. But unfortunately in this case, although I am actually connected to the internet despite what that says down there, um, I can't actually get onto their website. The Ergo, the manufacturer of this laptop, their site is currently down so I can't actually upgrade the BIOS so instead of waiting I'm going to uh, get on and do this now and just hope that it works this is technically an older CPU uh, which was actually released slightly earlier than the current one in here so in theory it should work but um, as I said despite what this says down here it is actually connected their website is down and if I refresh it it's still not working so let's just get on to hardware swapping. So obviously the first thing you want to do is shut it down completely and uh, then remove the battery because obviously that's not something you really want in if you're going to change out the CPU. So as usual, first thing we want to start with is anti-static precautions because uh, obviously that is important and um, the best way to do this, you could buy an anti-static wrist brand or whatever but um, best case in my solution, which is obviously the zero cost solution, is to just touch a bare metal pipe or a light switch or whatever is earthed or grounded or whatever. So uh, it would take any dangerous static away from you. So before you get the screwdriver out, take the battery out because uh, we don't want power flowing through the machine if we're gonna put a new CPU in it. There's a number of different ways to do that. But as you can see, that's just a clip sideways and the whole thing slides out. So now that we've done that, we can start taking some screws out. This machine in particular just has a screw missing in that hole, which is interesting. So we just want to want to take out the relevant screws, which are the two at the back here. This might be tricky because these screws have been taken out quite a few times, so not much of a head left on them. Obviously put your screws somewhere you can find them again. So I think it's, oh yeah, and this one. Put your screws somewhere you can find them so you can actually put it get back together again later. So on this one it's just those three screws and the entire back panel slides backwards. It's very stiff but it will come off. So as you can see, that is everything we need access to. And as you can see, the RAM here that we upgraded in an earlier video, link to that in the corner. Anyway, here's what we're here for, the uh, CPU, which is underneath this heat pipe here, which also goes onto the uh, graphics chipset, whatever, over here. So we're going to have to put the thermal paste on both of these. So to get access to this, we need to unscrew all of the screws on the fan, all of the screws on this heat sink and that one. So this could be a bit of a arduous task but uh, 
Again, if you don't lose all the screws, this should be relatively straightforward. These should generally be pretty tight, but these are slightly loose actually, which is a concern. I can't actually get this one out. Magnetic screwdriver is an awful help here, so uh, if you've got one, do use it, because you do not want to be dropping tiny, tiny screws down into a, a void in a laptop where you won't find it again. Because you can always guarantee it's not going to be a common, a common size of any sort, metric or imperial, whatever. So that's the fan has come loose, so now we just need to remove the ones here. On the CPU, let's keep those separate. As these are, do obviously, oh, oh, there's a spider in there, hello. Always keep these screws separate because they are actually different lengths depending on if they hold the fan down or if they hold the uh, heat sink on. So in theory, all that's holding this in now is a little bit of thermal paste on those two chipset, well, on those two processors. Processing dies, whichever you want to call it. Oh, there's also a fan to unplug, which is also where your tiny flathead will come in useful. But in this case, I don't think we're going to have to actually unplug it, so if we can just lift this off. That's a big clomp there, crikey. Uh, there we go. Yeah, we can't lift that off, never mind. Oh yes, there we go. That's the fan out of the way. Set that up. Try not to short anything, obviously, because there is still a BIOS battery on this. So there is technically still a bit of power. There's the heatsink. We want to clear that clear off. As you can see, the chipset only has a thermal pad on it as opposed to paste. So do bear that in mind. You don't need to put any more thermal paste on that. But we will need to clear that off, and we will need to clear that off on the heatsink itself. But obviously, we're not using that again, so it's not the biggest issue in the world. But it's easier to clean that off whilst it's still in the socket, so you can hold it still and not bend any of the pins. Now, there's all sorts of chemicals you can use to do this, but I find the easiest way is just to apply a moderate piece of a moderate amount of pressure with a fairly strong sort of uh, disposable towel. And it will generally come off. Till you try it on video, of course, then it will stop working. Anyway, there's a little bit of thermal base on there, that's not a trouble. But we will have to get that off, so that's what I shall do now. As a general tip, whilst you've got the heatsink apart, stuff like this dust here is uh, obviously worth clearing out. Because as you can see, that's pretty much blocking these passages here. And that is the only cooling on, on our laptop, is generally this single fan. So uh, do the best job you can to get all of that out whilst you're in there. Otherwise you could run into problems later and have to take it all apart again. So a tiny bit of petrol later and uh, the heatsink is clean. Doesn't really matter what you use to clean the heatsink off, um, despite what some people will say. Um, as long as it doesn't start you know, eating through the surface of the metal, it's pretty much fine. So uh, I always use either petrol or white spirit, it seems to work just fine. I've never had any problems. Um, so that will leave the surface nice and clean for you to um, get some new thermal paste on there. But obviously before you can do that, you need to get your new CPU in. And of course to get your new CPU in, you need to get the old one out. So, we shall go ahead and remove this Pentium T3400, I believe it is. Just turning that 90 degrees. That should now lift out. See, the longer it's been in there, the harder this will be. Unless that is already unlocked, I'm not quite sure. There we go. You see this, the uh, whole uh, socket move back then. That means it's unlocked. Luckily this stick has been badly applied, which means I can use that to lift it up. And there we have it. One very slow Pentium dual core. So let's put that to one side, because we certainly don't need that anymore. Opening my little anti-static bag, which rather smells quite interesting. The perks of buying second hand on eBay. We have our new Core 2 Duo which, as you can see, is also covered in thermal paste, which is wonderful, because that means I'm now going to have to go and clear it off. 
Brilliant. Luckily that came off pretty easily without any uh, any need for any chemicals. So we'll line that up how the old one was. It's pretty similar to a desktop chip. You've got a tr golden triangle in one corner. So just line that up and uh, you should be dandy. There's also a notch with uh, two missing pins on only one side so you can't really mess this up. And if you do Take a look on the back and check you haven't got any bent pins because that was obviously the only other thing that was sort of pretty good in. But as you can see, it dropped in pretty easily. If you ever try and tiny try and uh, wiggle it a little bit, you'll uh, you'll know if it is actually in the pins. And as you can see, this isn't moving, so it's properly in. This appeared to have come unlocked uh, unlocked from the factory, so we'll lock that back up. There we go. That's not moving anywhere now. So now we've got our Core 2 Duo installed. Go ahead and wipe off that uh, little bit of residue on that other processor die. Now we've got to go about the process of putting this back on. This uh, rather ominous looking tiny heatsink. No wonder laptops overheat, is it? Right, so this is obviously a, a, a much smaller die area than uh, you get on a desktop CPU. So obviously you'd want to use a much smaller amount of thermal paste. So just push very gently. That is probably far too much to be perfectly honest. If we just line that back up. Not quite sure how this went on. I think that went in first. Put our nice clean heatsink back on. Slots in there like so. And on it goes. Don't worry about the fan later. Got our three screws here, which I've set aside so we can't lose them. Right, the screw holes line up, which is generally a good thing. So if we start them all in loosely, don't go talking them up until they're all in, because we do want, obviously want to uh, try and tighten this down as evenly as we can. Do at least some part of this accurately. Okay, so that's, they're all started. Start doing that up. Obviously you'd have to go immensely tight with this, this is a tiny little laptop motherboard, tiny little screws. Most of the work here is actually done by the uh, the metal back plate here, which is slightly springy so it does actually push down on the CPU to ensure a good contact. And one last screw for the heat pipe itself, which goes on this end. Go about screwing the fan back in. So you don't drop the screw into the fan, that would be very bad. The trouble with a cheap laptop is that they generally use cheap screws which aren't really very magnetic. There we go, that's started in there hole. There's no torque settings or anything on this, uh, doesn't really matter. This isn't if anything important, this is literally to hold the fan in where it is sat. Obviously we didn't out unplug the fan, so we haven't got anything to worry about there. Actually an additional screw hole on this uh, particular laptop, which is interesting, because there isn't a screw on the uh, motherboard that it goes into in this corner. spinning freely so there's obviously nothing stuck in it and there's no dust in it. Right, check, just check quickly that all the uh, screws on the heat pipe are tight so you don't really want to be coming back in here. And there we are, that's basically all it's to a CPU change. So we've now got our Core 2 Duo installed. Just going back and install this cover. These are always a bit fiddly. Right, 
So covers can be fiddly, but if you just fold them in certain directions and push them and fold them and push them at the same time, they will eventually pop back into place. This one has three screws because there's one missing and I didn't take that out, so I'm not going to blame myself. It doesn't actually screw into there anyway, so that might be why there wasn't one in it. So we just screw that back in. There's something wrong with this screw. sure what's going on in there, but that can stay like that. It's not falling out, put it that way. There we go. It's all the way down. One last one. Up the top. Quite sure what's going on with this one here. These can sometimes be difficult to get in because they do put a little bit of a thread locker on them from the factory just to ensure that people don't go and upgrade them themselves because they wouldn't want that. Battery still in the unlocked position so it should just slide back in no problem at all. There we go, lock that in, flip it over. Let's see if it worked in this case with no bias upgrade. It's either F10 or delete to get into the BIOS. One of the two, oh dear. There we are, in the BIOS. Quite sure where we, how this BIOS works. Uh, system information. There we go, look, Core 2 Duo P8600, 2.4 gigahertz. Well, that's what we expected and that's what we got. So let's uh, just boot up into Windows and check that the um, check that the um, upgrade has actually worked successfully. It doesn't give us any rogue blue screens or break our activation of Windows for no apparent reason. Which is something it likes to do. There we are, logged on. That's the Windows desktop. As you can see, I already have Core Temp loaded up in the corner. There we go, look, Intel Core 2 Duo. I must restart my computer to apply these changes, oh dear. Well, before we do that, we'll just check. As we can see there, in Core Temp, it is telling us that we have a Core 2 Duo P8600, socket P, as we know. It's uh, come up with the temperatures there, 33, 32. It's uh, fine across the two cores, it's obviously a dual core processor. Uh, it's actually based on a newer architecture and it has a slightly lower TDP so this should actually be a good upgrade to uh, help the thermals as well of this laptop. Just a few points to mention at this stage. Uh, obviously it is the best, best practice to uh, get the newest BIOS you can. In this case I couldn't and I got lucky and it worked but um, always try and get the newest one you can. If you do get the newest BIOS when you're updating it it's generally best to plug in the laptop because obviously any power failure could completely kill the laptop uh, motherboard potentially which is obviously not a good thing uh, we're here to upgrade not break so um, in this case it works out well obviously I'm not responsible if this uh, doesn't work out well and uh, in your case and you end up breaking things but this is a good way to cheaply upgrade an old laptop like this one just to use get a little bit more life out of it or just to use it as like a server in this case for uh, games or a file server or whatever not that I'd be using this as a file server because the hard drive is tiny and very slow but as I said once again this worked out well thank you for watching this video I hope to see you again soon back on Dosh Tech.